Hi and welcome to my first YouTube video. As you're here I take it you've got an interest in long exposure photography, light painting and spirographs. I've been asked many times on different social media platforms about my setup and how I create the spirographs that I post. So much so that I thought it'd be easier to put this video together rather than keep explaining and writing what I do. It's easier to understand the method when it's seen. I'll show you what I do, not tell you how to do it. There are a few videos on YouTube showing light painting spirograph methods and it's worth watching them to get ideas. That's what I did when I started and then experimented in t until I found methods that I can work with to get the results that I want. It never stops though, I'm still experimenting. I'll put some links below to other videos I've found which I hope you'll enjoy and benefit from watching. I also received advice from people on Facebook groups on things like focusing. These groups are great for sharing experiences and knowledge. Because the camera is facing vertically up and looking at a small object, it's difficult to focus. I'll show you later how I achieve pin sharp focus. If you take away one or two ideas from the video that help you, then it's been worth making it. So I'll start by showing you the range of kit that I use. Uh, first item is a cheap lightweight plastic torch. I found the lightweight is better than the uh, the metal cased ones, certainly for swinging round. Uh, did have one mishap where the fixing did come out the ceiling. So cheap lightweight. Single AA battery reduces the weight again. Uh, string taped to the torch in a loop so that it hangs vertically because the camera is going to be directly below the torch. Two layers of card cut slightly bigger than the head of the torch and then taped all round and that stops any light uh, escaping or emanating from the side so that when the, the torch is swinging and it's almost vertical you get no light actually hitting the camera lens. The string fixed to the torch is fixed diametrically opposite so that when the torch is hanging it's directly above the camera and it's vertical. Onto the loop of string attached to the torch we then have a longer piece of string and this is what hangs from the ceiling and allows the torch to swing. I cut a couple of pieces of card, black card, uh, just bigger than the head of the torch and then cut it to shape and tape all round. Taped all round stops any light emanating from the sides when the torch is actually swinging. On the end of the torch the black card has been cut to shape and taped and then I pierce a very small hole in the torch and that's what allows the light through. Started off with a almost a pinhole, found that was too small and slowly increased the size of the hole until I was happy. So you just you just try different sizes until you find the one that you're happy with. Depending on the height of your ceiling and the distance between your torch and the camera then that will determine the length of the longer string that you hang from your ceiling. The fixings I use in the ceiling are just little hooks. Just screw them in to a piece of timber or through the plaster. Timber's better, it's more secure. And using an open hook means that when I'm doing the uh, multiple centres I can just move uh, the string around, the torch around, and uh, there's nothing blocking the way. And this is the result of uh, three centers. So that's my camera. I leave it permanently set up for spirographs. Uh, wireless remote, quite important so you don't get any uh, camera shake as you're starting the, uh, the exposure. Got a small spirit level in the hot shoe, 
that's just for alignment underneath the torch. Uh, a UV filter, uh, just in case. Uh, as I say, I've had one metal case torch drop, uh, missed the camera, but don't want any more accidents and certainly don't want it hitting the lens. The camera settings that I use, uh, the camera is always set in bulb mode, so it's on everything's on manual. Uh, my images are always longer than 30 seconds. ISO is 100, keeps a clean image, and the lens is always 18 millimeters. But that's only because of the distance between my torch and the lens. The distance between your torch and the lens will determine uh, what size, what uh, focal length you require. The aperture, that varies between f8 and f11, usually f8, uh, but sometimes I have to move it up because the ceiling is so low, as you'll see soon, some colours need f11 to eliminate any light reflection from bouncing back. The tripod, if you use a tripod, because you can lay the camera flat on the floor or on a table, um, the length of the string to the fixing will depend on the height of the ceiling you're working with. So a bit of trial and error is needed until you get the whole image in shot. If it's a high ceiling, then a bigger tripod or a zoom lens will help. Once the camera is in position, because of the it being a mini tripod and the weight of the camera, it tends to fall. So I have to prop up the camera uh, to keep it vertical. To focus, what I do is when the camera is hanging, is I put the tripod leg with the camera inverted next to the head of the torch and focus auto down onto a flat subject down on the floor. Once that's done, I invert the camera, stand it on the tripod and the distance between the lens and the torch head is the same, so the focus is set. That was a tip that I got off uh, somebody on a Facebook group. So we've got the focus set, everything's back on manual. Uh, take it off auto once I've uh, focused on an object on the floor. Uh, got the camera level using the spirit level. What I then do to make sure it is centralized is get a very long piece of string and hang it from the hooks in the ceiling. and literally line up the middle of the lens. And because I've got three hooks up, I use the two outside ones to make sure that the camera is central underneath the torch. So the camera is now focused. It's set vertically using the spirit level and it's centered under the torch using the long piece of string. We have a light source, so we're good to go. We can just use a white light, that works well, but it creates more interest in images adding colour. So I'll just show you what I use now. So when I started, I used pieces of gel, off cuts of gel, and actually attached them to the torch. And then swung that around. The problem with that is that if I wanted to change colour, it was a a bit of a pain taking this off with elastic band, putting it back on, all in the dark. Um, so what I changed to then was bigger pieces of gel and actually lay them over the lens of the camera. So they go over the lens of the camera and then the torch is swinging above. If I want to change the colour, two options I've got. One is to slightly overlap two different colours of gel and slide across, making sure that new one stays on. Discard the old one. Another option is to get some black card, cover the lens. That kills the light from uh, hitting the lens and then just change the gel. Or a piece of black Perspex. 
Anything really that doesn't let the light through just while you're changing the colour. Another tip off Facebook and the best one yet is these. Quality street sweets come in a big tub. Plenty of sweets in there, different colours. And the advantage with these is that the outer wrapper, not the foil, but the outer wrapper creates a wonderful film and it's big enough to cover, cover my lens and obviously once we've got that the sweet disappears pink, blue, gold, purple, red wonderful and this time of year they're about five pound a tub in the shops four or five pounds make I make ideal filters and they taste great the only problem with these is that they're very light so the slightest movement uh, can actually move them off the off the lens so what I bought was some acrylic discs these are 80 millimeter diameter and taped over the sweet wrappers so that I can actually change that easily onto the lens and it's centralized and it's heavy enough not to move so it's quite robust so single colors jewels and then four of them cut up and these all give different effects obviously as the light shines through This is another acrylic disc. Now they come in at about, they think these were a pound and 10 pence each. Um, but on this one, I've used a self-adhesive window film and then cut round to shape. And this film comes in all sorts of different colors and uh, sticks really nicely. You can get all the air out and you get a nice smooth finish. And the last one I use is a piece of plexi or acrylic. Uh, this is an off cut from a plexi blade that I made, a DIY blade. And that really does lay flat and is heavy enough not to move. And uh, so long as it's big enough, wide enough and long enough for the lens, it will sit there quite nicely. So they're all the uh, materials that I use to actually get the colours. Um, obviously you can use anything that's, that lets light through. On top of that, we can use other light sources just to highlight certain spots or try and get flares in. Uh, this is a, a key fob with an LED and I've just got a quality street wrapper over that with an elastic band. Uh, what I do do when I'm using these is I turn the other torch off because you don't want that swinging while you're moving around near the torch. So that's all the kit and uh, I'll take you upstairs now and show you my attic studio where I do all my spirographs or as Mrs G calls it, the storeroom. And if she's in a bad mood, the junk room. But she does have a point. So today, Mrs. G's in a good mood. So this is a storeroom, not the junk room. This is where I do all my spirographs, uh, macro, smoke, water drops. She really does have a point though. Uh, I think I need a bigger room. The first job is to focus the camera. So I bring the tripod to the head of the torch, the tripod leg, point the camera down onto a, an object on the floor, all set on autofocus. That's focused. So the camera is focused 
now inverted up looking back up towards the torch uh, I've aligned everything with the spirit level so the camera is level now I just need to align the uh, the lens with the torch and for that I'll use the longer piece of string so I attach the longer piece of string to one of the hooks and then align the camera with that then move the string to the hook I'm going to use the torch on and make sure that lines up with the centre as well so the camera is centred directly underneath the torch so that's the camera set up, pointing vertically up to the torch and then up to the three hooks. So those, the string can just come on and off and normally quite easily move to another hook. So I want to choose the first colour and that's going to be one of these acrylic discs with the quality street wrapper again. Lay that over the lens, turn the torch on and just start it swinging. Let it rotate four or five times, that just settles the, the uh, torch on the string. And then with the remote, I'll fire and start the exposure. So the torch is settled, and it just keeps swinging. So the exposure is still running. I don't let the torch get too close to the center because uh, that tends to blow out the, the center. You get very bright light. So now I want to change the color. So we get the black card or the perspex. Just not lay it over the lens, but hold it clear of the lens, in between the lens and the torch. At this point, you can turn the torch off. I tend to leave it on because a little bit of light does help. Remove one. I will use pink quality street. Make sure that's fully covered. Swing the torch again, let it settle, and then remove the card. And that's the second colour now going on to the image. How you spin the torch is going to give you different results on the image. If you spin in a large circle, you end up with what I call a nest. Uh, it's a circular image. Obviously you can do different colours with this one as well, but you will get larger circles, uh, still spirographs. It also takes longer for the, uh, the torch to reach near the middle. And if you release the torch in not quite as wide an angle, you won't get circles, you'll just get the usual spirograph sort of shape. And again, you can mix them. You don't have to do just the one and um, different directions. Once my spirograph's complete, I like to add some uh, lines to it. Two types. I've got uh, 
what I call a flyby, which basically is releasing the torch without swinging it, without uh, turning it. So it's just a straight line like that. And I'll release the torch and then remove the card when the torch has settled and reaches the high point on a swing. And then when it's done one complete line, I'll put the card back over. That will give one straight line across the spirograph image. To get the orbits, it's the same process. Release the torch and let it settle. And once it reaches a high point, re remove the card, but let it cross three, four, five times and then replace the card. That way you get multiple lines and uh, hopefully a nice, a nice pattern across the spirograph. At some point I intend to make a dark box which is the opposite of a light box so that instead of having to hold card or perspex or something over the lens I can just slide a box in and let go and it gives me two hands free for changing the uh, the colours or these discs and then obviously swing the torch again and once it's settled move the box out of the way and let the image continue. Well that's it from me for this first video, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I do and even better you found something to take away that helps you expand your creativity. Remember no two light painting spirographs will ever be the same, each one you create is yours and it's unique. Thank you for watching and there's a lot of like and please subscribe stuff which I won't go into but you know what to do if you found this of any help and if this video goes down well I've got ideas for other DIY light painting videos for the future. Thanks again and keep safe and well. Bye for now.